JavaScript is arguably one of the most important languages today. So the rise of the web has taken JavaScript places it was never conceived to be. And we need to take a look at the evolution of this scripting language. Hi everyone, this is Shantani from Edureka and in today's session, we will talk about what is JavaScript and how it has become one of the most important languages of today and tomorrow. Now before we begin the session, let's have a look at today's agenda. So first we will see the origin of JavaScript or how it has actually emerged. And next up we will discuss what is JavaScript and know a little more about the language. Moving on we will see that what can JavaScript do and we will have a look at the different frameworks of JavaScript as well. Next up we will discuss about the differences between HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And finally we will have a look at the different benefits of this particular language. And finally I will show you some of the fundamentals of JavaScript. Now before we begin the session, don't forget to subscribe to our Edureka YouTube channel to keep yourself updated with more such videos. Now let's get started. Now how did this particular language come into existence? So let's go back and take a look at the origin of JavaScript. Now Netscape Communications Corporation had a strong presence in the young web. Its browser Netscape Communicator was gaining traction as a competitor to the NCSA Mosaic, the first popular web browser. So Netscape was founded by the very same people that took part in the development of Mosaic during the early 90s. And now with money and independence, they had the necessary freedom to seek further ways to expand the web. And that is precisely what gave birth to JavaScript. So this is exactly when Brandon Ike, the father of JavaScript, came into the picture. Now Ike was contracted by Netscape Communications to develop a scheme for the browser. Now the web needed something which would be easy to grasp syntactically, dynamic, to reduce verbosity and speed up development and also powerful. Now Ike saw a chance to work on something he liked and joined forces. Now the idea at the time was that Java was not suited for the type of audience that would consume Mocha, that is descriptors, amateurs, designers, etc. Java was way too big and too enterprisey for this particular role. So the idea was to make Java available for big professional component writers while Mocha would be used for small scripting tasks. In other words, Mocha was meant to be the scripting companion for Java in a way analogous to the relationship between C, C++ and Visual Basic on the Windows platform. Now in the year 1995, Netscape Communications and Sun closed the deal. Mocha or the live script would be finally renamed as JavaScript and it was presented as a scripting language for small client side tasks in the browser while Java was promoted as a bigger professional tool to develop rich web components. Now this first version of JavaScript set in stone many of the traits the language is known for today. In particular its object model and its functional features were already present in the first version. So now that you know the history behind JavaScript, let's move on and see what is JavaScript. So JavaScript is basically a high level interpreted programming language used to make web pages more interactive. So have you ever thought that your website is missing something? Maybe it's not engaging enough or it's not as creative as you want it to be. Now JavaScript is that missing piece which can be used to enhance web pages, applications, etc. to provide a more user friendly experience. Now JavaScript is basically the language of the web. So it is used to make the web look alive by adding motion to it. To be more precise, it is a programming language that lets you implement complex and beautiful things or design on web pages. So when you notice a web page doing more than just sit there and gawk at you, you can bet that the web page is using JavaScript. Now the first feature is that JavaScript is a scripting language and not Java. In fact, JavaScript has nothing to do with Java. Then why is it called JavaScript? So when JavaScript was first released, it was called Mocha. It was later renamed to LiveScript and then to JavaScript when Netscape and Sun did a license agreement. Also, it is an object based scripting language which supports polymorphism, encapsulation and to some extent inheritance as well. 
Also, it doesn't have to be compiled like Java and C which require a compiler. Finally, JavaScript runs in a browser so you can run it on Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Safari, etc. JavaScript can execute not only in the browser but also on the server and any device which has a JavaScript engine. Now currently we have hundreds of programming languages and everyday new languages are being created. Among these are few powerful languages that bring about big changes in the market and JavaScript is definitely one of them. It has always been on the list of popular programming languages. Now according to the Stack Overflow for the sixth year in a row, JavaScript has remained the most popular and commonly used programming language. Now let's move on and see what can JavaScript do. So JavaScript is mainly known for creating beautiful web pages and applications. An example of this is the Google Maps. So if you want to explore a specific map, all you have to do is click and drag with the mouse. And what sort of language could do that? Of course, it's JavaScript. Now it can also be used in smartwatches. For example, there is this popular smartwatch maker called the Pebble. It has created Pebble.js, which is a small JavaScript framework that allows a developer to create an application for the Pebble line of watches in JavaScript. Some of the most popular websites like Google, Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, they make use of JavaScript to build their websites. And not just that, among things like mobile applications, digital art, web servers, and server applications, JavaScript is also used to make games. A lot of developers are building small scale games and apps using JavaScript. So now let's move on and have a look at the different JavaScript frameworks. So, one major reason for the popularity of JavaScript is the JavaScript frameworks. Now, the first one is the AngularJS. So AngularJS is the Google's web development framework which provides a set of modern development and design features for rapid application development. Then we have the ReactJS which is another top JavaScript framework mainly maintained by Facebook and it's behind the user interface of Facebook and Instagram showing off its efficiency in maintaining such high traffic applications. We also have the Meteor JS, which is mainly used for providing backend development. So, using JavaScript on the backend to save time and build expertise is one of the major ideas behind Meteor. And finally, we have the jQuery. Now, this can be used when you want to extend your website and make it more interactive. So, companies like Google, WordPress, and IBM rely on jQuery. Now anyone familiar with JavaScript knows that it has something to do with HTML and CSS. But what is the relation between these three? So let's have a look at the relationship between HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now think of HTML as the skeleton of the web. It is used for displaying the web. On the other hand, CSS is like our clothes. We put on fashionable clothes to look better. Similarly, the web is quite stylish as well. So it uses CSS which stands for cascading style sheets for styling purpose. And finally there is JavaScript which puts life into a web page. Just like how kids move around using the skateboard, the web also motions with the help of JavaScript. So now that you know how important JavaScript is to make your web look alive, let's have a look at the different benefits of this language. So now there has to be a reason why so many developers love working on JavaScript. First of all, it's easy to learn and simple to implement. So it is a weak type programming language unlike the strong type programming languages like Java and C++ which have strict rules for coding. Also, it's all about being fast. In today's world and since JavaScript is mainly a client side programming language, it is very fast because any code can run immediately instead of having to contact the server and wait for an answer. Not just that, it also has rich set of frameworks like AngularJS, ReactJS which are used to build web applications and perform different tasks. JavaScript also builds interactive websites. Now we all get attracted to beautifully designed websites and JavaScript is the reason behind such attractive websites and applications. Also, it does not require a compiler because the web interprets JavaScript. 
So all you need is a browser like the Google Chrome or Internet Explorer and you can do all sorts of stuff in the browser. And finally JavaScript is platform independent and it is supported by all major browsers like Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Safari, etc. Now that you have quite a good idea about this particular language, let's move ahead and cover some of the basic fundamentals of JavaScript. So some of the fundamentals involve the variables, constants, data types, objects, arrays, functions, conditional statements, loops and switch case. So let's first talk about variables. Now variable is basically a name given to a memory location which acts as a container for storing data temporarily. So they are nothing but reserved memory locations to store values. Now to declare a variable in JavaScript we use the let keyword. So now here I've used the Visual Studio code and here I have typed the syntax for variable declaration in JavaScript. So you just have to use the let keyword and suppose you want to declare a variable as h you can just write let h and semicolon and then you can provide the particular value for this variable. Now next up is the constants. Now constants are fixed values that do not change during execution time. Now to declare a constant in JavaScript we use the const keyword. So here I have another example to declare constant in JavaScript. So you just have to use this particular keyword as const and then you provide a constant value to this particular variable. So it's very easy to declare a variable and a constant in JavaScript. Now moving on next up is the data types. Now you can assign different types of values to a variable such as a number or a string. In JavaScript you have two categories of data types. So you have the primitive and the reference. So for primitive you have numbers, strings, boolean, null, undefined and for reference you have objects, arrays and functions. So first of all let's have a look at the objects. Now an object is basically a standalone entity with properties and types and it is a lot like an object in real life. For example consider a girl whose name is Emily, age is 22 and eye color is brown. So in this example the object is the girl and her name, age and eye color are her properties. Now objects are variables too but they contain many values. So instead of declaring different variables for each property you can declare an object which stores all these properties. So to declare an object in JavaScript we use the let keyword and also make sure that you use the curly brackets in such a way that all property value pairs are defined within curly brackets. So here you can see that we have used the let keyword and then we have used the object where our object is a girl and don't forget to use the curly braces here. And now inside the object we have certain properties described. Now these are the properties that belong to our particular object and finally close it with the curly braces as well. So this is how you declare object in JavaScript. Now moving on next up is the arrays. An array is a data structure that contains a list of elements which store multiple values in a single variable. For example if we consider a scenario where you went shopping to buy art supplies the list of items you bought can be put into an array. Now to declare an array in JavaScript we use the let keyword with square brackets and all the array elements must be enclosed within them. So this is the syntax for declaring an array in JavaScript. We use the let keyword here and then we put the variable with the square bracket. Now inside the square bracket you can also define the value for your array. Now when you don't insert any value it is an undefined array and you can put any number of values inside this. Now next up is the functions. So a function is basically a block of organized reusable code that is used to perform single related action. So now let's create a function that calculates the product of two numbers. Now to declare a function in a JavaScript we use the keyword function. So here I've used the keyword function and I want to get the product of two variables a and b. So I'll just type product in brackets a comma b and then I'll just return the value of a into b. And this will give me the product of these two particular values. Now here I have declared a function called product and I have passed two parameters to this function a and b. 
which are the variables whose product is returned by this particular function. Now moving on next up we have the conditional statements. Now for the conditional statements we have the if condition and the else if condition. Now conditional statement is a set of rules performed if a certain condition is met. The if statement is used to execute a block of code only if the condition specified holds true. And the else statement is used to execute a block of code if the same condition is false. Now moving on next up we have the loops. Now loops are used to repeat a specific block until some end condition is met. So there are three categories of loops in JavaScript like the while loop, do while loop and for loop. And finally moving on to the final one we have switch case. Now the switch statement is used to perform different actions based on different conditions. So how does it actually work? So the switch expression gets evaluated once then the value of the expression is compared with the values of each particular case and if there is a match the associated block of code is executed. So these were some of the fundamentals involved in JavaScript. Now to know more about each one of these in details you can go back and check out our JavaScript tutorial video. So this was all about today's session. I hope you understood what is JavaScript and you got to know about the origin of how this language came into existence. So with this you are aware about the importance of JavaScript. So do let us know about your opinion in the comment section below. Till then thank you and happy learning.